An acid-base neutralization reaction is one where an acid and a base react to produce a salt and water. The salt may be acidic, basic, or neutral, depending upon what type of anion and cation make up the salt. In an acid-base neutralization reaction, the hydrogen ion reacts with the hydroxide ion to produce water. This is a double replacement type of reaction, so we can predict what the products will be of a neutralization reaction. Determine the products for the following neutralization reactions. For equal and molar amounts, indicate whether the pH after neutralization will be acidic, basic, or neutral. In our first example, we have magnesium hydroxide plus acetic acid. So if we do double replacement, the hydroxide ion will pair up with the hydrogen ion and that will give us water, and the magnesium ion will pair up with the acetate anion. So we have to be sure to write correct formulas. Magnesium is always magnesium 2 plus, and acetate is C2H3O2 minus. So we're going to end up with Mg C2H3O2 in parentheses with the subscript 2 for our neutral formula. Now looking at our salt that we formed, if we break this up, we would have Mg2 plus ion and the acetate anion. The magnesium 2 plus ion would be neutral because that would have came from a strong base such as magnesium hydroxide. It won't undergo hydrolysis. And the acetate anion is going to be basic because that came from a weak acid. So acetate is a weak acid. Acetate is a weak base from the weak acid, acetic acid. So it will be basic. Therefore, after neutralization, the pH would be greater than 7 or basic overall. For the next example, we have HNO3, which is nitric acid, plus ammonia, NH3. And so when we predict our products, we're going to figure out what we would form. And this is a little bit of a different type of example because we won't actually see the water in this one. The ammonia is going to be the base, and the base would grab a proton from our acid. So when ammonia picks up a proton, it'll form ammonium ion, NH4+, and we'd be left with the nitrate ion, NO3-. minus. So our salt would technically be ammonium nitrate, NH4, NO3. If we look at each component of our salt, the ammonium component is going to be acidic because that's a weak acid, and the nitrate is the conjugate base of a strong acid, so that'll be neutral. So we have, after neutralization, a pH that would be less than 7, or it would be an acidic solution. Let's try a few more examples. We have HNO2 plus KOH, so HNO2 is nitrous acid plus potassium hydroxide. When we do our double replacement reaction, we're going to get water, and our salt would be potassium nitrite, KNO2. To decide if it's going to be acidic, basic, or neutral, we take our salt and we break it up into its cation and anion components. So we would have potassium ion and the nitrite anion. Potassium ion is neutral, and NO2 minus would be basic. So after neutralization, the pH would be greater than 7, or this would be a basic salt that was formed. HBr plus NH3. This is another example like the last one where the ammonia is the base and it grabs a proton from the acid. So we end up forming ammonium cation NH4 plus and we're left with bromide anion Br minus. The ammonium cation will be acidic and Br minus is from a strong acid so that would be neutral. The pH of the solution then would be less than 7 or it would be acidic from the salt that was formed after neutralization. And in our last example, we have one more acid-base neutralization reaction. We have potassium hydroxide reacting with perchloric acid. And so from double replacement, we'll form water. And our salt would be KClO4, potassium perchlorate. 
And so that's made up of the potassium ion and ClO4 minus perchlorate ion. The potassium ion would be neutral. That's a group 1A metal. And the perchlorate ion is from a strong acid, so that would also be neutral. So after neutralization, the pH would be equal to 7 since we formed a neutral salt. In the previous examples, when we were deciding if the pH after neutralization would be acidic, basic, or neutral, we were assuming that we had equal molar amounts of acid and base that we were mixing together. So we only had to look at the salt that was formed. If we don't have equal molar amounts being mixed together, we can use stoichiometry and the balanced equation to figure out what we'll have left over after neutralization. So first we wanna write the neutralization equation. We could figure out how many moles of acid we have reacting, how many moles of base we have reacting, and then determine how much excess acid or base are present after neutralization. From that, we can calculate the pH of the solution. Let's try this next problem in three parts. First, what is the pH of 0.1 liters of a 0.1 molar HCl solution? Next, what is the pH if 0 0.005 moles of sodium hydroxide is added to our HCl solution? And then lastly, how many moles of sodium hydroxide would be required for complete neutralization? So starting with part A, what is the pH of 0.1 liters of a 0.1 molar HCl solution? HCl, we know, is one of our strong acids. So when HCl is in water, we have hydronium ion that's formed when a proton is donated to the water, and we have chloride ion. In order to figure out the pH of a strong acid, we simply have to take the negative log of the hydronium ion concentration. And our hydronium ion concentration will end up being the same as the concentration of our strong acid because we know the strong acid will dissociate 100%. So our HCl is 0.1 molar, but that means that we're also going to have 0.1 molar hydronium ion and 0.1 molar chloride anion. So to calculate the pH of a strong acid, we'll take negative log of the concentration, which ends up being 0.1. The pH of our HCl solution comes out to 1. We should expect it to be low because it's going to be very acidic. Next, what will be the pH of our HCl solution if we add 0 0.005 moles of sodium hydroxide to it? Recall that sodium hydroxide is a strong base. We're also going to make the simplifying assumption that no volume change occurred when we added the base. So initially we had 0.1 liters of a 0.1 molar HCl solution, and we calculated that the pH of that was 1. When we add sodium hydroxide to our HCl solution, we're going to have a neutralization reaction start occurring. So we'll have HCl plus NaOH, and we can use double replacement to predict our products. We'll form water, and our salt will be sodium chloride. So if we had mixed equal molar amounts of HCl and NaOH, the salt we would form, NaCl, would be a neutral salt but we haven't necessarily mixed equal molar amounts yet. So that doesn't mean that our pH is going to be equal to seven just yet. So we started at a pH of one. In order to figure out what our remaining pH will be, we wanna first figure out how many moles of acid we had present initially. We can do that by taking the molarity of the acid times the volume in liters to get the number of moles. So our molarity of our acid was 0.1 moles per liter, and we had 0.1 liters, so we're gonna multiply by 0 0.100 liters of our acid. And you can see that your liters will cancel, and you'll be left with moles of HCl. So when we multiply, we get 0 0.01 moles of our acid. We can do the same thing to figure out our base but we were given the number of moles directly this time. So we were told we added 0 0.005 moles of base. So we don't actually have to go through the process of multiplying molarity by volume this time. Next, we can take the difference between the moles of acid that we had and the moles of base that were added. So 0 0.001 moles of HCl minus 
0.0050 moles of our base, which is sodium hydroxide. The difference comes out to being 0 0.005 moles of HCl that are left over. The number of moles of HCl that are left over are equal to the number of moles of hydrogen ion present. Now, to calculate pH, we don't want moles of hydrogen ion. We want concentration of hydrogen ion in molarity. To calculate the concentration of H+, we're going to take the number of moles of H+, that remain, and divide by the total volume in liters. Since we assume no volume change from the addition of sodium hydroxide, our total volume will be the same as the volume of acid that we started with. So our volume will still be 0 0.100 liters. So our concentration of hydrogen ion after the incomplete neutralization comes out to being 0 0.05 molar. From there, we can take the pH by doing the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. So we'll have negative log of 0 0.05 molar, and that gives us a pH of 1.3. So it's still very acidic, but the pH has raised a little bit once we added some of the sodium hydroxide because only some of our strong hydrochloric acid solution has been neutralized, but not all of it yet. How many moles of sodium hydroxide would be required for complete neutralization? So we started with a 0.1 molar HCl solution, and we had 0 0.100 liters of that. We figured out that if we did our molarity times our volume in liters, that gave us the number of moles of HCl, which came out to being 0 0.01 moles. When we have complete neutralization, that's where our moles of acid will be equal to our moles of base. So in order to neutralize all 0 0.01 moles of our strong acid, that would mean we also needed to add 0 0.01 moles of sodium hydroxide. At that moment, we would only have water and sodium chloride in our flask. And then depending upon the identity of the salt, we could decide if it was going to undergo hydrolysis or not. From the reaction of HCl plus NaOH, we formed H2O and NaCl. It just so happened that NaCl was a neutral salt. So no hydrolysis would happen at that point and our pH would be equal to seven. Determine how many moles of barium hydroxide are required to neutralize 0.1 liters of one molar hydrochloric acid. So first we should write our neutralization reaction. We have HCl plus barium hydroxide. We can do double replacement and we'll get water plus barium chloride as our salt. We also want to make sure to balance our neutralization reaction whenever we're going to use stoichiometry. So we're going to end up needing a 2 out in front of the HCl and a 2 out in front of the H2O in order to balance this. We are told that we have 0.1 liter of HCl and the concentration is 1 molar. We want to use this info to work over to the barium hydroxide and figure out how many moles we need. So starting with our HCl, we can take our molarity, one mole of HCl per liter, multiply by our volume in liters, which is 0 0.100 liters. At this point, the liters would cancel and we would have moles of HCl. We can use the balanced equation now to move from moles of HCl to moles of barium hydroxide. So the balanced equation tells us every two moles of hydrochloric acid that react, we need one mole of barium hydroxide. So two moles of HCl for every one mole of barium hydroxide. At this point, our moles of HCl cancel and we're left in moles of barium hydroxide. And that comes out to being 0 0.05 moles 
of barium hydroxide that are required for complete neutralization. We only need half the amount of barium hydroxide to hydrochloric acid because they react in that 2 to 1 ratio. So if we mix together 0.1 moles of HCl with 0.05 moles of barium hydroxide, we'll form water and barium chloride. We can then look at our barium chloride salt and we could decide if the pH would be acidic, basic, or neutral after complete neutralization. And since barium chloride is made from a strong acid and a strong base, that salt will be neutral. And the pH in this case would be equal to seven because no hydrolysis would occur.